welcome back to another photorec.tv critique show. This week's theme, architecture. We'll be taking a look at some of your best building cityscape shots, and I'll be giving you my feedback. And I want to thank everybody who submitted their work. It's not always easy to put yourself out there in front of everybody, especially for the purpose of critiquing. But as I've said previously, it is a fantastic way to get to improve your photography. And I focus on giving you specific things that you can do next time you're out there shooting to be better and to capture stronger images. Let's get started. Just a reminder, as we get started from each week, I'll be picking my favorite image. That will live for a week on top of the photorec.tv Facebook page as the little cover image. Let's dive into these architecture shots. Our first one is from Caroline. If you've watched my other videos, you know my other critique videos specifically, uh, I'm a big proponent of being very deliberate in the angle you shoot at. Uh, and my first issue with this image, and it's actually really my only issue, uh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful time of day captured, beautiful location, the light is fantastic, all really nice, nice exposure. You have done some post-processing, I think you've done a great job there. Uh, but the angle feels a little um, haphazard. Now, I could be wrong, this could be the only place where you've gotten this kind of framing because the branches do kind of frame that bottom line, bottom of this, uh, I'll call it a mansion, very nicely. Um, but I would like to see a very deliberate framing, either straight on, sorry, very deliberate composition, in it, either a straight on or from a more of an angle. So I knew it wasn't just kind of in between those places. The other thing that I want to fix in this is the uh, vertical. Just need to lean this guy uh, a little bit more upright. You shot it at 18, and so you get a little bit more of that distortion as the, the building looks like it's kind of leaning away. And we can constrain crop so it brings it in. And um, we can rotate it here too. I think somewhere. No. Let's come back over here. Yeah. I'm watching that left column angle. And that feels a little better to me. I like that. Uh, so I think that's nice. The other thing that I would work on if, uh, with more time is this: we got blue up here. I think that's really getting the light from the sky. And down below, it's a little bit warmer. So I try to match those two as well. And honestly, let's just quickly I'd brighten the whole thing just a little bit. Really make sure that white is white. And I think that is a nice image. And again, though, the light here is beautiful. What a beautiful location. Very nice. And I think overall, you've done a nice job. Just be really conscious of your framing. We've got this shot uh, from Jamie in Cuba and uh, her edited JPEG as a result. So a couple things she's done. She looks like she's really just kind of straightened it. I, I agree. Let's straighten it. I'm going to work on the raw here real quick. Uh, you know, but this space over here doesn't do a whole lot, this line, this bit, we just see just the tops of these columns. They don't give us enough information, so let's get rid of them completely. Let's bring it in a little bit, and let's bring it in up here until we're almost touching. Let's see if we can get it out a little bit more. So I would love to see this out at the left-hand side over here a little bit more. It gives us a little bit more uh, leading into that space. And then I'm just going to brighten the shadows a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity, make it a little punchier. I think overall that's nice. Got a bird back there or a dust spot. It's not adding anything to the picture. So I'm just going to get rid of that. There. Subway entrance to a subway shop. Heh. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. This, similar to Caroline's, feels a little bit haphazard. Why aren't we shooting this dead straight on or a little bit more of a, a kind of exciting angle. We're just kind of in between those two points. But um, I can straighten this, so let's do that real quick. I feel like that is a straighter look. Um, and I've noticed you've edited already. You've brought your whites all the way down to 100, and I'm not sure why, because if we bring them up, I think that's nice. This, this is nice white marble, and it should look as such. I could even 
raise them up a little bit. I notice that we're starting to get some highlights in here. That's pretty small areas though. Um, maybe that's why you're trying to avoid those, but that's really such a small area, I think, overall. And if you wanted to, you could paint in on those areas. Add a little clarity to add a little bit of crunch. Um, and I think that this is nice. I like the play on words. Alexandra has what I think is a fantastic shot. It's one of those ones where we don't have the ground to tell us if it's straight or not. So it, I'm going to match up this one edge of the building along here. Somewhere right around there feels a little straighter to me. Not only do we have this building, but we have a reflection of um, the very famous World Center. World Center one, Trade Center one. Uh, and this all looks nice, great exposure. I don't have a lot to say about this, except maybe go ahead and bump that clarity up. Really let it pop out with man-made structures using a lot of clarity is usually okay uh, because it is a unnatural building and giving it all that clarity really helps those individual lines and repetition uh, stand out. If it was something natural, like a, a forested scene, it gets so crunchy that it starts to look unrealistic quickly. But with a um, subject like this, I think it works very nicely. And that's great. I don't think I have anything else to add to this. I think you've done a really nice job of kind of contrasting the two. Actually, they're, they're very similar in their architecture, so there's no contrast there. But having the one building reflecting the other gives you complete context of where it is. I like that. Claire's got one of the River Thames. And, you know, London has some interesting architecture. I know Scott has talked about this in the past. I believe this is the Pickle Building or the Gherkin, and there's like a walkie-talkie building. Oh, that's the one, the walkie-talkie building right there. Um, but my first thought on looking at this picture is, what is the subject? You could make an argument that the subject is kind of the old and the new, because we definitely have, you know, some kind of castle thing here in the foreground and then we have these brand new glass gleaming structures and we've got the river as well but it just becomes kind of a, a, a picture and my eye just wanders around with no real good focal point except maybe the tugboat um, but it, it's kind of small down there on the horizon or down on on the water and doesn't give me a lot to work with so when you when you come up to a scene like this that you look at and you say wow Look at this. You have to really take a step back in your mind and say, what, what is it that's catching my eye in particular? And really think about trying to focus in on just that. Uh, I, I think maybe this might even be a stronger image without the tugboat because, as I said, I'm trying to figure out, is it the tugboat or not? Let the tugboat pass by, crop in a little bit more. I think we're already at a 16 by 9, so let's come in just a little bit, not a whole lot, and see if we can kind of tighten that up a little bit. And let's bring our highlights down, see if we can get some of the moodiness of the clouds. I'd like to see those to be a little bit moodier, and our shadows up so that the buildings continue to pop a little bit. And again, we can use some clarity here as well. Um, this would be a fantastic night shot, I believe, with kind of the contrasting of the modern lights reflected in the water, plus uh, what, what I imagine the castle is fairly dark, but with some lights on it um, reflecting in the water. Nice, Claire. Oh, I never remember. Um, this looks a ton like the building in Iceland. I, th I think it might be, uh, and it is a fantastic awesome building to photograph uh, with so much abstract colors, uh, sorry, abstract shapes, it's th these kind of hexagonal honeycomb structures all put together. Very, very cool. This just cropped in just a little bit. It felt a little crooked to me. It still does. Let me bring that so they're even up there. And that seems a little bit better. Uh, and I would raise that clarity too again to really kind of make that pop. Otherwise, I think this is nice. We can bring those shadows down and see if we can, oops, sorry, no, I mean the highlights down. See if we can get those bright areas not to be so bright, a little bit more even. But I think that's really nice. Let's bring the whites up. I want, yeah, I want this to just be gleaming right there. Just shy of clipping. Remember again, I have the uh, clipping indicator turned on and it shows you where you're starting to lose detail. And losing just a little bit of detail is fine. 
And our last shot is Maxim's Coal Ice Cream. I love that architecture shots can be so different from an old historic plantation type building to the gleaming downtown structures of New York City to someplace, I'm gonna guess American Midwest, oh, Iowa says that, um, to something like this. So this is a neat shot, uh, you know, it, it, you've done it straight on, which I appreciate. Now I know you, you, you had contributed another one that had much more um, lens distortion to it. I'm not sure how you got all that lens distortion because you are shooting with the 40 millimeter lens. I wish you'd given a little bit more room so the bicycle wheel isn't cropped and the edge of the flag isn't cropped. But otherwise, I think this is nice. I'm gonna bring the shadows up a little bit to showcase just this area here, a little bit bright, a little bit more clarity, and maybe a little bit more vibrance. But it's already a pretty vibrant picture. Um, we're also just clipping right here too. Did I do that? It wasn't already clipped, was it? Ah, before I straightened it, you did have enough there. So you're gonna wanna watch out for that, but just watch out for nicking the edges. Uh, and you know, another interesting shot here might be just the top, the coals, and with these Star Wars action, giant action figures on top might be an interesting contrast as well. And now it comes time to pick what should live at the top of my Facebook page, at the PhotoRec TV Facebook page for a week. And there are some really strong, fantastic images here. Uh, I love Alexandra's, but I'm going to choose this one because it will work very nicely as a Facebook cover page. Uh, and Alexandra's very tall picture wouldn't work quite as well. Thank you so much. And that's all for this week's theme. If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up. If you would like to submit an image for a future critique, visit photorec.tv slash crits, that's C-R-I-T-S, to learn more about how you can do that and improve your photography. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.